Look at the size of this mug. Aloha, welcome back to Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour. If I look hot and tired, it's because it's 104 degrees today in Costa Mesa. Man, it's hot in the breezeway. I'm happy to welcome back to the breezeway a couple who has joined us before, Anna and Gregorio from the Contigo Tiki Bar. Contigo Tiki Bar. Yeah. Uh, good to have you guys back. Hey, Thank aloha. You. So there's one bar in particular that has caught your attention, and it is a place that has kind of been overlooked by a lot of people in the tiki world, and that is the Hilton Hawaiian Village. The Hilton Hawaiian Village has been a bit overlooked, mm -hmm. and the legacy, its history, its place in that pantheon of tiki, and really it all kind of started with our hanging lantern and just seeing this garnish in some vintage photos and then internet research just kind of tracking down where this lantern came from and it all went back to the Hawaiian Village and at the center of Hawaiian Village and the cocktails was Harry Yee. Yeah, a dude named Harry Yee who wasn't Harry at all. You could ask Justin Scard about that. <laughs> Justin knows. But Harry was the guy who created a lot of the cocktails that were served at the Hawaiian Village, including creating the Blue Hawaii. It really wasn't until about 55 when Perry one day was like, everybody's asking me for a Hawaiian cocktail, oh. but we don't have Hawaiian cocktails. We just serve up the traditionals that came from the mainland. Totally. And so that's when Harry you know, started looking at what resources he had around him, the rums, the gins, the vodkas, of course, pineapple and other local fruits and said, well, I'm gonna create a Hawaiian cocktail. So you came on probably like a year ago now, you guys developed a tribute to a mug that was, it's really rare, but it was a mug that they used at the Hawaiian Village, the Tapa mug, right? We've called it the Tapa Punch mug, which was our iteration of it. The name that we have found was the Petroglyph mug, which is what was most commonly used on Tiki Central and Uga Muga. The images of one of the petroglyphs found in Maui, which has been dated to be 2,000 years old. And so that is the paddle man. There's also a paddle woman, which I think is pretty rad. But paddle woman? Yeah, so we call mm. we call the, per the person on our mug the paddle person. <laughs> um, somebody recently gave this to me at one of our shows. And this is one of those mugs from the Hilton Hawaiian Village, right? Yes. That's the diamond head. The diamond head, and it's like a diamond shape. Well, it's a triangle, but diamond -y. Super cool, but so these are pretty rare mugs. Super rare. But there is one that is even super rarer than any of these mugs. Rare, rarer. And that is the Chimp in Orbit mug. The story behind all of these mugs from the Hawaiian Village being so rare is that they weren't for sale. Oh. They were only uh, made for in-house use. These weren't sold in the gift shop or, hey, buy your cocktail and plus mug. That was never an option, so. Oh, I didn't know that. These <laughs> mugs from the Hawaiian Village have been preserved by they've those. Been, they've been stolen. The only way that this mug made it out was one of two ways. Somebody, you know, slipped it in a purse or a big pocket after, you know, having their cocktail. Or I think during the 80s when they started to phase out these mugs, a bunch of employees just took them home because they were just throwing them in the trash. Oh, and man. so those were really the only two routes that these made it out of the Hawaiian village. You know, thankfully, there were people who ended up stealing them, conserving them. Employees who were like, well, let's save it from the trash. You know, like a lot of tiki's, right? When these restaurants went down, people would go and take yeah. the tiki's out of the dumpsters. And that's really what happened here with these mugs. I'm sure there were bags of them just thrown in the dumpster. Employees were taking them out. That's the reason why they're so rare. They were never meant for sale. And I think another reason why this particular mug that you had recreated, you don't see very often, is because it's comically tall. It looks like a vase, like a like not even a vase would be this tall. Why don't we bring you back for making the drink? Okay. It was made as a statement piece for multiple reasons, but one of the really cool stories is by ZZ Top. They were touring, opening up for the Rolling Stones in 1972. They ended up in Hawaii and in their documentary, they actually talk about the chimp in orbit. So what happens is, you know, the guys from ZZ Top as, you know, any good musician would be getting ripped 
every yeah. night because you got your stipend, right? This is how much you can spend. And so they're going down in the Hawaiian village to the shell bar and to the top of room and they're just getting wasted. Unfortunately, this is really messing them up for the next day's show. So their manager rolls in and says, hey, one, you're killing the budget, two, you know, shows aren't really up to par. So I'm putting you on a two drink limit. <laughs> so the guys from ZZ Top are like, how do we get around this two drink? limit mm. they see these really tall mugs and they ask the bartender hey what's in those we want two so they end up ordering the chimp in orbit cocktail they get two of them yeah. the story goes that the mug was so tall that they were sitting on the stools at the bar and they had to place them down on the floor <laughs> and the straw would reach up to them and they would be drinking them like that. You know, the mug was really freaking tall. Yeah. So like when you look, I mean, just compare it to. <laughs> yeah, that's surprising. It really stood out when you were in the bar. I actually found original photos from some 1960s show, like detective show. They had a bunch of scenes in the topper room and I found original photos of this. Wow. Recently, I was contacted by some of the local Ohana in San Diego. One of their friends, Mothers, actually has a nice collection of mugs because she worked with Harry Yee. Oh, wow. And as I was saying earlier, when they were getting rid of these mugs, she ended up, you know, preserving mm -hmm. a few of them. And they sent me actual photos of the original mug, mm -hmm. which this is based on. But really, if you look at the top of Punch mug that we recreated, you look at the Chimp and Orbit mug, and then you look at the 1959 menu yeah. from the Hawaiian Village. I'm trying to bring to life that actual image and illustration. When you look at the scaling, and then you also look at uh, Beach Bomb Berry's recipe in Sip and Safari, you get 14 ounces of ice, 10 ounces of rum and juices, and that literally comes to the top. So there's a lot of wow. mathematics involved, and I'm a historian. So you think this is pretty true to the original version? It's pretty close. I know the exact dimensions of the original. I have a sculpt mm -hmm. in the works, and I will also be coming out with that original, true vintage style, color, size, dimension. Mm -hmm. What we wanted to do here was really just bring to life that illustration from the 1959 Wine Village menu. Amazing. All right, so we're gonna make the cocktail from the Beach Bum Berry app. Also, you said Sip and Safari. It's yeah, Sip and Safari. please check out the Sip and Safari book if you mm -hmm. don't have it already. The recipes in there and on the app. If you're interested in more tiki cocktails, you should especially go and get everything that Beach Bum Berry's done. And if you want like a handy little uh, what? app, phone app, yeah, reference thing. Get the Total Tiki app, super the, good. The thing's a lifesaver when you're out and about and you're like, oh, yeah. how do we make this cocktail? Pull totally. It okay, so for this cocktail, we will be using lemons, oranges, orange curacao, red vermouth, grenadine, creme de cacao, and gold Puerto Rican rum. We're gonna be using Bacardi 8. All right, so let's start with a uh, lemon. Do we make this in a mixing tin? We make this in the mug. We make this in the mug. Let's bring the mug back. We'll put the mug over here. Oh my God. Shockingly tall. Okay, so let's start by cutting that thing in half. And how much lemon juice are we gonna be doing? Three ounces. Go ahead. So this is the first two ounces of lemon juice. Probably should have strained that. One more ounce of lemon juice. Okay, so here is the other ounce of lemon juice. That is a bizarre feeling of like putting it into this big test tube or graduated right. cylinder. <laughs> Next ingredient is orange juice, right? Yes. Three ounces. It's kind of already a big drink. Yes. Okay. There's definitely more juice in oranges than there are in lemons. Okay. Two ounces of orange juice. Oh, that's it right there. Three ounces of orange juice. Okay, what's next? Red vermouth. I've never had red vermouth before, have you? No, first time. Why do you think it's red? Uh, probably because of the ingredients. Should we taste it? Yeah. It's very sweet. What does that smell like to you? It smells like wine, huh? Yeah, a bit of citrus, maybe. Um, mm. Yeah. Like cherry, maybe? Cherry, yeah. I'll give you a little there. It's good. Yeah? I've had worse things. 
Oh, it's like Campari. No, Campari is a lot stronger. But it's very similar. It's know? like if you mix Campari with wine. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> but we know that even horrible ingredients have their place. How much is that? We're gonna do one ounce. Okay, so one ounce. One ounce of red vermouth. How much grenadine? Another Just ounce? a quarter ounce. A quarter ounce grenadine. Mm -hmm. Very strong. Okay, there you go. Hmm. Quarter ounce of grenadine. Okay, so we're gonna use the orange curacao now, right? Yes, and this is gonna be half an ounce. Half an ounce of orange curacao. One half ounce of orange curacao. Half an ounce of creme de cacao. And what is creme de cacao? Chocolate. Chocolate. Who doesn't like chocolate? Mm -hmm. I don't like chocolate. Oh, you don't? No. One half ounce creme de cacao. What do you got there? Corks. What do you think about corks? I like corks. <laughs> One and a half ounces of gold Puerto Rican rum. Okay, so that's the drink, right? That's the drink. We gotta add ice. Yes. <laughs> what the hell, how does this work? And you just basically fill it up the rest of the way, right? Because yep. the, the mug has been built to the right proportions. It's getting closer. That's a ton of ice. Okay, now how do you mix it? Four spoon. Okay, I'll hold it. Oh wow, so you like swizzle it. Yes. Okay. How do you know when it's done? You tell me to stop. Stop. <laughs> and then how do you garnish it? With the appropriate cocktail monkey. Okay. All right. Okay. So, of course that is Anna making the cocktail. We're gonna bring Gregorio back on now to talk about the rest of the history of the chimp in orbit. Bye. See you later. <laughs> so you have one made in there. But one of the things that we suggest is getting a swizzle and a longer one because that's the perfect tool or getting a extended bar spoon for mixing up the chimp in orbit. It works perfect. Okay. All right. And so from the Hilton Hawaiian Village by Harry Yi, this is the chimp in orbit. Let's test this thing out. Cheers. Cheers. Hmm. Oh, wow. That's a, uh, that's really interesting. It's refreshing with the lemon juice, but then you get like this kind of curveball from the red vermouth and the orange curacao and the grenadine. And the creme de cacao, I don't know if I taste that or not. It's what takes off the edge, in my opinion, of the, the vermouth. It's really good. That's an odd drink. So I actually was surprised myself because I didn't think I was gonna like the drink with the vermouth in it, but I think the secret is going with the Tempest Fugit oh. from the cacao because the richness of it and being well balanced really brings off the edge of the vermouth and it really balances it all out. And everything here that you used as well is is quality. So what mm -hmm. you're putting in is what you're gonna get out. It's good. It's an, it's a very interesting cocktail. Immediately I almost get like that kind of heartburn that you get from citrus drinks from a good cocktail. <laughs> Just because of all the lemon, but I like it. I like holding this mug. First 50 are gonna be available to Breezeway Cocktail Hour viewers. And then the others are gonna be released on his birthday, right? We're gonna wait till the first 50 go out and then we're gonna be releasing these on September 26th, Harry Yee's 104th birthday, uh, as a you know continued tribute to him. But included in this, a bunch of these chimps for the garnish, the 24 inch straw, recipe card with the original Chimp in Orbit recipe, as well as a collaboration and tribute to the Chip in Orbit, which we did with Lamar from False Idol. That will come as a recipe card in the- Only for buyers. Okay. So on that card. And we're also adding a tribute to Ham, the Chimp, which is this nice little pin that Pintiki did for us. Oh, okay. There's also another little bonus thing that you're, what are you, are you selling it or it comes with the mug? The rocket thing? This was something that came out of just wanting to add tribute to Ham. And what, so what's I, Ham? Ham is the little chimp. We have this rocket that was created by a NASA historian and it's the actual Mercury 2 
capsule. And there was a monkey that flew in that thing? Yeah, he was three and a half years old. What year was this? 1961. They shot a monkey into space. Spent Poor monkey. 16 and a half minutes up there proving that beings could complete tasks correctly because they weren't sure oh. if you go into space, what's going to happen to your mind and functioning. Oh, if you go crazy or something. Yeah, so, you know, he proved that, it, that if you gave directives, that those directives could be followed. He's a hero. Yeah. Did he and make it, it back? Yeah, he did. Uh -oh. and he lived a long life and you can... You did know, he they, really? Yeah, he did. Good work, but, monkey. But, you know, we just kind of wanted to add a little bit of tribute to uh, Ham and his mission. And so we actually had the fins and the capsule recreated to honor that mission. If you make this, you should strain all the fruit juices because I've got so many lemon seeds in my mouth. <laughs> okay, back to your strain, monkey, monkey strain, talk. Strain your juices. So at first, I thought it was kind of funny that I was coming up with this little concept, mm -hmm. but in the 60s, the space craze, the Jetsons, that whole, totally. you know, excitement about the future, the Maikai also created a rocket cocktail. Theirs was made out of aluminum. Oh. It was based on um, the 1962 flight mm -hmm. of, I believe, the first human to go into oh. space. You know, they had the fins, they had the vessel, and they had the capsule okay. with theirs. So obviously I'm not the only one who was kind of thinking along mm -hmm. these lines. And I didn't find that until after I had produced these, but it kind of validated the direction I was going mm -hmm. with creating this. And the stability is much better. I, it scares me to leave this thing alone because the, the breezeway kind of bar area is a little bit, It's we're up on a little platform, so it's a little rockety, Ooh, rockety. But this like seems to help out a bunch. And so we're actually coming up with another little piece mm -hmm. that will slide over and will be flat based. So that will kind of help out oh. with the stability of it. Or mm -hmm. if you're one of those people who's gonna put it on your shelf with all your other collectibles, um, was it Museum Putty? So- Oh yeah, totally. You know, some people will use it. Some people will put it up on the shelf. I mean, most of our mugs sit on shelves. Mm -hmm. We only have 25 pairs of these and we're, we're essentially selling them at cost. We're not gonna profit off of the capsule and the mm -hmm. fins, oh. everything else, like the recipe card, the pin, the straw, the uh, chimp, mm -hmm. those will all come with your purchase. Okay, cool. It's a cool mug. It's, you will never, almost never find one of these things in the wild. And uh, it's cool that you're bringing them back. That is a tart drink. It's very tart. It is. Well, it's good, but it's just like, whoo, pucker, pucker fish. It pucker is, fish it's lamp. a tart, tart one. So, Top of Punch, Chimp in Orbit. These are the first two in our Harry Yee tribute series. So the third one is going to be the Diamond Head. And I'm already working on sketches, which will follow in that tradition, but be a little bit different mm. just to kind of, again, uh, bring to life what you see in the illustration. And then the grand finale is gonna be the Hawaiian Eye Mug. Oh, cool. Well, the, the cool thing about the tap of the tap room mug is that you did, it's like a relief carving. The actual one, I think is just printed on the mug. And then this thing is like a little bit taller than the actual one from what you've told me and what yeah. you've learned. Um, but it's rad that it's this tall. So I'm excited to see what you do with the diamond head mug. And uh, you have one other thing that you have coming up. Right, so we have really great news. We finally negotiated a deal to get access to the original Passionola recipe from the 1930s, which was oh. one of Don's very first secret syrups that he used. And uh, you can find Passionola in his 1934 menus. Oh. So we've negotiated the deal to get access to that. And Doc Parks from Zombie Village in Wilfred's is partnering with us to help us re-engineer the original Passionola formula to fit today's palettes, cocktails, mm -hmm. and we're gonna be bringing in Passionola, reintroducing it to the market as a high-end cocktail syrup. Wow, exciting stuff. And don't forget the book. What book? The Passionola book, the history of it. Oh. We just launched it on Instagram at p.fashionola, P.F-A-S-S-I-O-N-A. L, Passionola. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Please support our Kickstarter. We're releasing our book and syrup based on the history of Fashionola. My co-author is Martin Lindsay. You might know him from his previous book, 90 Years of Classic San Diego Tiki, which is an oh. amazing, amazing book. Well, thank you again for uh, for joining us here at The Breezeway. And I wanna thank you and Anna for, uh, Anna, you wanna come back here? Folks, if you aren't already subscribed to our Patreon, you can subscribe to the Patreon and I will send you this enamel pin. It goes to all of the people who are guests on the show. 
as well as Patreon members. So that is for you. Thank you so much, Anna. They can follow you on Instagram at... At the Contigo Tiki Bar. Oh, all right, both of you guys. <laughs> and we also now have a gift Now we have for... a gift for you. Oh, a gift for me. Yeah. The tables have turned. <laughs> this is our actual oh. shirt. You can't purchase oh, right. this particular design. This is for... Ohana, this is our, our blacked out edition, our midnight edition. We gift this to those who we uh, are appreciative of. Well, thank you so much. Thank appreciate you for it. having us on. Thank, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I thanks really for sharing it. this with everybody because it's such a, it's such an interesting, different thing. Yeah. Thanks for creating it for the tiki world, for the cocktail world in general. Folks, if you enjoyed this, please be sure to like, comment, hit the subscribe button if you aren't already. And we will see you in the next cocktail episode. Aloha. Okale Maluna. Yeah, cool move. That's a bitter son of a bitch right there. That is very bitter. It's tart. Mm -hmm. It's like very tart. A, uh, a couple of... Let me start that over. Um, there's no audience applause. Wait, hold on, there's a bug. And there's a car. Yeah, it really... Should we try that again? Yeah. Do you, do you want to answer that? Because you looked at me, I thought you would answer it, but you No, at me. I'm not. That's why I told him that I was just going to bring the juice. <laughs> See, now, we, now I'm all f***ed up. And today, we have Spike Marble. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Harry, oh my god, what did I just say? Uh, this ear is f***ed up because Doug, at Dawn the Beachcomber, Doug would set up right here, mm. and I'd have his symbols right in that ear. So this ear is the the bad one. Oh gosh, a, that's a yeah. It's it's one of the first things to go on musicians. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah, mine mine has to do with going to rave the next season. Jeez. <laughs> Please edit that. There. <laughs> <laughs> no, leave it here. I know, right? Hot in the breezeway. Ordering the chimp and mug it. Uh, chimp and mug. So they end up ordering the chimp in orbit. Say it again. <laughs> Creme de cacao. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna bring Gregory. And we're gonna bring Gip. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, welcome to the Breezeway. I'm Spike Marble. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> and you can hear the fireworks right now at Disneyland. I love that. It's like, you know it's 9.30 in Orange County when the Disneyland fireworks are happening.